Hi guys, my name is Ashley Njeroge and welcome to yet another episode of The Chill with Ashley. Today we are going to be on Angela Livo's Chill. She is the biggest brand in hair in Kenya today. And it's a very funny story how we met because I had gone to check out Posh Palace Curiosity. You know when you see something on Instagram, you're like, Ay, nani nani wenda uko. So then I went to Posh Palace. So when I got there, I was in a phase in my life where I was trying to change my hair. So if you guys have seen pictures and I'm going to show them right here, I put dreadlocks and then oh, I removed them. So I was contemplating getting a wig. So I saw her get in and I was like, oh, this is really nice hair. So I asked her, hi, did you get this hair from Foina Beauty Clinic? So she looks at me the ones for, mm, is this girl serious? Anyway, so she's like, no, my name is Angie and you know, I am luxury hair by Angie. So we are curious to find out what her entrepreneurship journey is, what wakes her up, what made her do hair, why is she not rearing pigs or, you know, practicing agriculture. So join us on her trail. Hola, my name is Angie from Luxury Hair, I'm the founder, and I'm happy to share my story with you guys. So from high school to luxury hair. Um, after high school, I went to, I immediately joined uni and I did international relations in USIU. Honestly, I only did it because my parents needed me to go to school. But I wanted like my dad to teach me his business so that I can take over him or something like I, I i felt like it was a waste but it wasn't because i learned so much from school and i got i got to network and meet so many people who right now i can say i relate to one way or the other especially in business i already started hustling then i had my friend in china she used to bring clothes so we used to bring clothes from China and that time people hadn't started like people hadn't started um, importing clothes. So we would sell this like we used to look at Kim Kardashian and we're like, she's wearing a bandage dress, we need to bring this. She goes to China, she brings a bandage dress, we we'll sell. You know, little little money. It was a lot of money then because I only used to depend on my pocket money. I actually started a tours company. I did Zola destinations. <laughs> so I used to go to, I'm from Mombasa. So I used to go to a family friends uh, in Yali who had homes. So I would sell the idea. I'd be like, okay, you have a three bedroom house. You have a five bedroom house and you're not using it. So if you give it to me for 15,000, I can get you clients to get it on short lease and I can make my commission. So they were like, okay, fine, you do it. So USIU, when we used to have on, uh, during a holiday school break, we would go to the coast, like a group of like 15 people. So they used to be like, yo, Angie, do you have a house? I'm like, I got you. So I go, I get a house. If I'm getting it for 15,000, I'd give it to them at maybe 20, 25. In a day I make my 10,000. This is just one client. So it became like, in USIU, I was known for the connect for Mombasa. So it went from uh, apartments to homes, even hotels. I started here, I think in my third year. I used to go to beauty su supply stores and then I'd buy hair for like 3,000 and then it was crap. Like the quality wasn't even worth it. So I'd started importing it for myself. I do like three bundles, two bundles. I use it on myself. And then everybody was complimenting me like, wow, your hair is nice. Where did you get it from? I'm like, oh, what? It's nice. Okay. I can get it for you. So they give me the money. I send it to buy a PayPal. I get it by DHL. Then it got to a point like it was too much. I'm like, guys, no, like I can't just be bringing hair for you people. Then I said, okay, there's a need. At that time, there was a need for quality hair. People weren't selling quality hair. It was garbage. It was basically 
fiber, fiber hair, and then they write Brazilian. So I started bringing a few bundles, like maybe 10, 15, 20 bundles I sell. The money I make, I put it back to the business. I wasn't using it at that time I was saving because at that time I, wasn't, I was still dependent on my parents. So I saved a lot of money. Then after I graduated, my parents wanted me to go back home in Mombasa and I didn't. So they said, you need to enroll for your masters. So I did that. Midway, I got a job as a motivator in a hotel. So basically, I used to welcome guests and smile. Welcome to Pan Africa. Did you make a booking with us? And all the time, I used to be like, really? Like, did I go to school to be sitting pretty in front of people and welcoming them? You know? And the pay was not good. The pay was OK. It was okay, but like I felt like I need more than this. Like this is not enough to sustain me. So I quit after three months. I used to cry to my mom because I used to report to work at six in the morning. And I'm just, I didn't have a car that time. So I'm taking a job. It's cold in the morning. Everybody is moody. I go to work, everybody is moody. And I was just like, this is really not for me. Like, I'm not going to sit here and be employed. So I used to even call my mom crying. I'm like, mom, oh, you guys took me to a good school. And now I'm just here even. Because in that job, like in the hotel industry, when you have a big booking, like of, if we have like a conference of 100 people impromptu, you're going to help out. Even if you're a manager, you will go and serve tables. You will go and offer people, like, you will become literally a waiter. And I was so humbled because my friends are coming to, for dinner. And here, there's a big booking, so I have to go and attend to them. I was like, anyway, it was a humble, humbling experience for me. I learned so much from that. So I quit after three months. I was like, this is not for me. Because my mom was like, oh, hang on. I was like, no, this is, this is really not for me. I just quit. I don't even know if I wrote a resignation le letter. I just said, I'm not going to work. So I continued with my hair business. So my parents were like, OK, if you're, if you're not going to school and you're not working, then we're not going to support you. You have to come back home in Mombasa. And I was like, no. So that's when I said, OK, let me go full force with my hair business. And that was the beginning of luxury hair.